Yo, best. Yo, best. Yo, best. That shit best. crazy. Welcome, everybody, to All Even Live Exclusive. My name is Barry Grant Jr., host of the All Even Podcast. To my left is Matt the Great Catarizzolo. Down at the bottom is Mike Guido, host of Guido's Gridiron Blitz. And who we have on the show today is a Michigan State alum. He's a former OG of Fox Sports 1. Now he's with ABC New York as the sports anchor. Welcome to the show, Ryan Field. Fellas, fellas, how are we today? Absolutely, we're good. Doing man. great. Good. You know, since we're on the Brady Bunch boxes, I thought we should do like the look, you know, where we're looking at each other like the Brady Bunch. Might not be a bad idea. Say hello to everybody. Right, right. So, Ryan, you know, how are you doing? How, how's everything going? I know you were in New York. So, you know, how's your family doing? How's everything going with the cold? You know what, guys? I got to be honest. It was it was a tough winter here um, yeah. with everything being shut down, as I'm sure as I'm sure it was wherever you guys are at. Yeah. Uh, but being here in New York, it was just a, an entirely different animal altogether because you're paying New York rent, uh, but you don't feel like you're living in New York. Nothing's right. open. Um, there was just a lot of stuff going on. And uh, but over the last I'm happy to report over the last probably three weeks, the city has just exploded. It's come back to life. The restrictions are gone. Uh, and it's almost like COVID never even happened as crazy as that is to say, uh, given everything that we've trans that's been that's transpired here over the last 15 months. Um, but it's just been, uh, it's been an incredible turnaround and I hope that's the case where you guys are at and hopefully, uh, your families are happy and healthy and the worst is behind us at this point. Yeah, definitely. Well, listen, we're, we're definitely healthy and happy and we're in New York right with you, man. We're, we're all New Yorkers here. So Beautiful. we have four New York guys here. We, we, we went through the struggle together. So everybody's good. Now you don't have to enlighten us on New York rent. We all, <laughs> yeah, I, there you I, go. we all understand. You're well first. Right, right, right. <laughs> well first. De- dealing with, dealing with the pain every day. So, <laughs> so while uh, Ryan, you know, how did you get started in regards to, you know, pursuing this as a career? So I went to Michigan State, as you pointed out, yes, uh, the finest institution in all the land, as I like to tell people. <laughs> uh, and I went there for journalism and I did some radio and TV in college and got an internship at the local Fox station in Lansing, which is market 116. And my first day as an intern, uh, the sports guy called in sick. And when you're in market 116, the sports department is basically just the sports guy. Wow. Uh, there's no there's no photographers. There's no editors. There's no writers, no producers. Wow. Uh, so they're like, intern, you're up. You're doing the sports tonight. So my first day as an intern, I did the sports in Lansing and got ended up getting hired my senior year as the weekend sports anchor after that. And uh, the rest is history, boys. Here I am talking to you guys uh, many years later. I won't say just how many, but many. We, we're, not, we're not going to push age from, out there, right? <laughs> yeah, from that moment on. But yes, it was it was quite uh, quite a lot longer than you guys were in school. I can promise you that. Nice, nice. <laughs> All right. Um, so what's wrong with the Yankees, Ryan? Well, we're just getting right into it, huh? Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All the pleasantries are over with. Two it's questions. All right. All right now it's hard hitting. How's the family? Journalism. How'd you get into the business? What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, this is this is something else. I mean, look, you guys know, and the, and the listeners know, uh, they, they played better here the last two games, but it's the same problem. They can't play defense, they can't manufacture runs, uh, their base running is abysmal. Uh, some of the mental errors they make over the course of games just leaves you shaking your head. Uh, the rotation outside of Garrett Cole has been iffy at best, which it was such a big question mark coming in. I mean, you had two guys you were counting on in Tyone uh, and Corey Kluber, who had pitched a combined one inning the last two years. And it was just to, to put that much stock into those two guys was just a, a huge gamble. And I think it, you know, for, some, in some ways, I guess you could say it kind of blew up in their face. So, uh, you know, the bats are starting to come around. There's been some numbers now with the spin rates going back down that the Yankees offense has been on an uptick the last 10 days or so. So if they can keep mashing home runs uh, and winning games six to five, uh, seven to four, um, you know, I think they're going to be okay. But this is the same team basically that we've seen the last three years outside of Garrett Cole. Um, so it's, it's kind of like, you know, we're really not surprised seeing them go through these funks because we've seen it happen the last couple of years. Right. Yeah, definitely been uh, kind of an up and down topsy turvy season for, for them so far, but you know, maybe they can win 60 and maybe they can go 60 and 38 for the rest of the season. So they can sniff a wild card spot. Yeah. Right? I mean, but even that kind of seems like a lot at this point, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. it, it's like they, they kind of put themselves in a tough position. It's, yep. an uphill, it's an uphill climb from here on out. 
That's right. Um, and, you know, when you have to play almost 700 baseball the rest of the way to make a playoff spot, I mean, that's that's asking for a lot. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see if they can pull it off. But, you know, and don't forget, too, guys, I mean, Cashman's going to swing a trade by the deadline, maybe two, maybe three. Uh, the payroll is way too high for them just to mail it in and say, yeah, we'll just give it another shot next year. I don't think that's going to happen. Right. Uh, I thought he was very forthright in his comments on Monday when he came out and said, we're asking for help. Like we're looking for help. Um, you know, we're, 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 we're listening to all the offers. I mean, they're, they're trying to make whatever moves they can happen here. Um, but you know, there's going to be a lot of teams looking for pitching, a lot of teams looking for hitting like there are every year. So we'll see, you know, what kind of, uh, magic he can work here come trade deadline time. Yeah. So the MLB released a memo, right. On this sticky substance thing. That's just, you know, gripping baseball, no pun intended. And Garrett Cole is kind of become the face of this whole thing, right? It's, it's really him and Trevor Bauer at the center of it. And we saw Tyler Glass now come out and a lot of people starting to become very vocal about this, right? They're expressing a lot of frustration saying, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to throw a baseball with nothing. And they're saying you can't expect us to use nothing. So where, where do you see this road leading to? Well, first off, we heard Garrett Cole drop a for Pete's sake last night in his sound. Right? Am I am about... I the only one that just was <laughs> like, what are who, who, who unironically uses that phrase? <laughs> I said I was thinking to myself, I'm like 1967 called. They want the thing. <laughs> I mean, it's been a long time since we've heard somebody drop for Pete's sake, and he was pretty he was pretty serious about it right. too. Right? He, he was very upset. He was pretty passionate. <laughs> um, but look, he he, he has a beat. And I feel like guys like him, because of the high, you know, him and Trevor Bauer, guys like that, the high paid pitchers are going to be the easy targets because they're so good. And it's like, well, are they really that good? Uh, are they getting some enhancement and some help along the way? And, you know, every pitcher from what it sounds like, and I've, I've been around the game for a long time, uh, going back to my time in Detroit, covering the Tigers for 10 years. I mean, it seems like every pitcher uses some sort of substance. Nice. It doesn't have to be pine taller on the back, like uh, something. Ada on the back of his neck. But, you know, whether it's sunscreen or something to give them a better grip. And I think the bigger problem is, guys, everybody who's talked about this has talked about the baseballs and how the baseballs aren't consistent from one to another. Right. And some are super slick, some are not. I mean, to me, that's an MLB problem. Yes, I mean, yeah. if you're not giving your guys consistent uh, baseballs to use on a night in and night out or every start, uh, guys coming out of the pen. I mean, if they're having to use baseballs that feel different with each ball, I mean, to me, that that's a big issue right there in itself. Um, I don't think MLB should have brought this up in the middle of the season. I think it's something you either do before the season or after the season. Uh, it's just bringing a lot of negative press to the game. Absolutely. Um, but I understand why they're trying to do it because, you know, as we see with the Yankees, you know, they're just a boring watch unless they're hitting home runs. I mean, the offense across Major League Baseball, the numbers prove it. It's, I think there was only one season worse in the dead ball era, um, you know, since the dead ball era, I should say, in terms of collective batting average of the teams through last month. I mean, it was that bad. So that's why Major League Baseball is like, look, the ratings are down. We're bringing fans back after the pandemic. You know, we need to mix this thing up right away. I mean, you can understand their thought process behind it. Uh, I just don't know if I necessarily agree with the timing. of it. Definitely. Definitely. Barry, before you go, could I yeah, just go back oh, off this? So hey, it, do you think that this is somewhat of a product of major league? Ba it's not necessarily a, you know, we're trying to nail these pitchers for cheating. It doesn't feel like that. No, right? because but it, it feels more like we noticed the dip in popularity and we think it's because there's a lack of hits. And right. this is the thing that they're targeting out first. Right. And I, I think that's definitely it, because if they were targeting pitchers, it would be a 10 game suspension without pay. It's right. a 10 game suspension with pay. So <laughs> if you're a starting pitcher, you basically miss one start. So, I mean, what's the punishment, really? I mean, right. you're punishing the team to a certain extent, and that's why the teams are going to be cracking down on it. But I think if they were out to really get the pitchers, it would be a one month suspension, no pay, uh, you know, you know, you a chance to get a second offense and you're banned for life. I mean, it's, I don't think it's anything to that um, level. I just think it's something that to your point, you know, the numbers are down across the board in terms of viewership. Um, uh, we can't really say attendance because they haven't been able to really come to the games right. for the yeah. right. last couple of weeks. Um, but the offense has been down. And when the product is boring to watch, I mean, why don't they just go ahead and eliminate the shift? I think that's the first thing they should do. Got to get it out of there. Yeah. There you go. Before they start messing around with the, the pitchers and everything else, eliminate the shift, open up the game that way. I mean, you guys watch as much as much baseball as anybody else. I mean, how many times do you see a guy ground into the shift 
with runners at first and second and two outs to like end a threat when that would normally be a base hit, right? You know, two runs score or at least a run scores, uh, and then the inning keeps going and there's some right. more excitement. Instead, you know, I, I just don't understand it. But, you know, second base, two two defenders on either side of second base, that should be the rule and leave it at that. If you want to bring in an outfielder, maybe, maybe you could do that and kind of creep him up a little bit if you want to make that like a pseudo shift. Right. You should have two infielders on either side of second base. That to me is the first rule that they should go ahead and implement. I agree. I totally agree with you. Um, I am the only Mets fan here on this panel, Ryan. So um, there's something to be said about that. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, you something know, to be said about that. I am a huge Met fan. I bleed blue and orange. And Jacob DeGrom to me is, you know, I, I have a podcast and I've said this, that he's approaching Seaver, uh, 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 you know, status in regards to how I feel, how dominant he is and how his career can look. Do you think that he could be the best pitcher that the Mets have ever had in their history? Because I don't think there's Tom, any question. Yeah. He's, he's going to have to do it for a few more years to be mentioned in the same breath as Tom Seaver, whose numbers speak for themselves. Right. I mean, what's his ERA down to now? 0. 0.54? It's, it's he, insane. Six, six RBI. He only has given up four runs all season. I mean, it's just remarkable. And how about this guy? He comes out last night and he says, yeah, my shoulder didn't feel right the whole third inning. He struck out the side in the third inning. He like, struck out unbelievable. Eight of, he struck out eight of nine guys. He struck last out night. eight of nine guys. And he said his shoulder wasn't feeling right. I mean, pitchers would kill to have that problem. Yeah. He, he had three perfect innings and then came out of the game. Right. Um, but, you know, obviously they got good news today on his MRI. Looks like it's just, you know, a minor bump in the road. At least let's hope at this point. Um, but yeah, he, he's, he's going to be the MVP if he keeps on this trajectory and he's the best pitcher in baseball. I know Yankee fans don't want to hear that, but that's just the fact of the matter. Yes. Um, and, I, I can, I concede. Yep. Yeah. I mean, he's, although I once had a producer of mine tell me that Luis Severino was as good as Jacob deGrom. And I said, dude, I'll have whatever you're having. There's no Yikes. anywhere close to being true. Um, so it's one of those things where, um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's going to have to keep doing it to be mentioned in the same breath as Tom Seaver, but what he's doing right now is just mind-blowing, to say the least. Definitely, definitely. Go ahead, Matt. All right, so this is the, this is the big question that everyone's wondering. In a, okay, so in a year where the Yankees' biggest problem historically has been injury, right? They've been snake-bitten 2019, snake-bitten 2018. They've had a record number of injuries. So in a year where they have stayed relatively healthy with certain with, – particular exceptions to Voight and Severino and guys like that, they've remained relatively healthy throughout. Aaron Judge is leading them in games played, right? One of the more concerning things about him was his ability to stay on the field and be healthy. Yep. So in a year where they stay relatively healthy, but they're struggling offensively, if they miss the playoffs, is Aaron Boone going to be fired? And along with that, what are moves that Brian Cashman or the Steinbrenner family going to have to make to right this ship quickly? As it's another I, year with the, without a World Series appearance. Yeah, I mean, you, you just mentioned, you go back to 2019, 2018, last year. I mean, like I said, I feel like we've had the same team on the field. I mean, Brett Gardner is still on the team. I mean, right. I like mm -hmm. this, this, it's been the same team. And, that, you know, listening to a lot of talk radio, that seems to be the frustration with the Yankee fans. It's just like, look, you know, we've seen this movie before. Like, right. we know how it ends. They're not good enough to win the World Series. So why are we trudging out the same lineup uh, they tried to mix up the pitching staff, but we already talked about, you know, the asterisks that came with that with Kluber and Tyone. And I think the Kluber injury definitely uh, has had an effect on them in terms of the rotation, to be sure. Um, but I think there's going to be wholesale changes, whether it's Boone. I don't think it's Cashman. I don't think they would do that to Cash. Uh, maybe they agree to mutually part ways or something like that. Right. But if they, don't, if they don't make the postseason, I think Boone is most certainly gone. Uh, and they're going to have to really start looking at, you know, what are you going to do with Gary Sanchez? Do you finally cut bait with him? Do you trade him to get a couple of younger guys? How big of a contract do you give Aaron Judge, who's now, what, 30 years old or about right. 30? Mm -hmm. right. I mean, you can't give him a 10-year deal, um, you know, especially a guy that, you know, to your point, my, Matt, that, you know, this is the first time he's been on the field, really, in two years, at least on a consistent basis up until now, knock on wood. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where they're going to have a lot of decisions to make, um, but I expect there to be wholesale changes if they don't make the postseason. Definitely. Agreed. All right, Ryan, I know you got to go. So we do this before we end every interview. We ask everybody the same question and the responses we get are different. There are no wrong answers, even though there probably are, but I'm assuming you're not going to. Depends on who you ask, Mike. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
who is the greatest athlete of all time in any sport? Holy smoke. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Is there, is there, not, is there not a, a pause button question. on this thing? Let me see where that is. <laughs> we are not going to edit this, Ryan. It's going yeah, straight. <laughs> holy cow. The greatest athlete of any sport. That reaction is about on par with what I, we usually get. I love that reaction. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like you do enough interviews and you're sitting there going, okay, what is he possibly going to ask me? That was the last thing I thought you were going right. to uh, I would say as a kid who grew up in the 80s and 90s, uh, I'm, oh, partial to, I'm partial to Deion Sanders, but okay. I, I would say Bo Jackson. Nice. Nice. Is the great Solid answer. Athlete. I mean, I, I love that. You one. saw what he did on the football field and some of the just go back and watch some old YouTube videos of the catches right. he made and the throws he made playing for the Royals. I mean, guy was incredible. He was amazing. And he had that he unfortunate hip injury that derailed his whole career. And if he stayed healthy, I mean, who knows how we'd be looking at him. Maybe uh, maybe he would have right been now. a dual Hall of Famer. Who knows? Yes. I mean, you never know. I mean, he was he was that good. So uh, you put me on the spot. I think that's going to be my final answer. <laughs> oh, good yeah. one. Safe answer. It's pretty solid. All right, Ryan. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. It was really a pleasure. Um, hopefully the Islanders can be able to win tonight. Let's hope and, so. You know, give, give, give my Islanders some luck, man. I, I, need I will. That. Uh, I need that. how about a quick, uh, round Robin or predictions? You guys got Islanders or lightning tonight? I got Islanders winning three, one. I have, I have, Island, I have Islanders bouncing back after they got trounced last game. So I got them guys back in the, in the, uh, Coliseum. I'm not into hockey. I'll say Islanders. <laughs> just say one of, just say <laughs> I mean, one or the just other. Say, just say, just say one or B. That's what I said. God. I, I will go. I will go. Islanders get the win tonight, uh, three to two. I think it's gonna nice. be a one. All right, Nets All right. Bucks. I Nets like that. Bucks. I like that. That's, I like that. Ooh, Nets Bucks. Nets, Nets Bucks. Nets, Nets Bucks. Uh, Kevin now, Durant Harden, is Harden. not having another game like that. I'm, I'm not. Bucks. I am going. I am going Bucks by ten. Okay, Matt. What about Matt? Mm. <laughs> so the series is three two. Yes, three, two, Nets. Two Brooklyn, yes. Wow. So either Milwaukee forces seven or the. Nets close it out. Nope, pushing my chips. Nets close it out. Okay. All right. Boom. Michael? I am, I, like I said, I'm going Kevin Durant doesn't have another game like that. I take Bucks. It goes to game seven. I agree with you. I, I think uh, I think they're going to have to watch those guys' minutes. I mean, Durant played 48. Harden played 46 on yeah. a hamstring. Like, right. Yeah, I, 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 think Harden, I think Harden is still banged up. And, yeah, he you know, is. He, There's he, no he, question about that. I, th I think the Bucks win tonight by seven. I think uh, I think they kind of pull away late, but we're going to have game seven at Barclays. Uh, definitely. Definitely. It's going to be very, very interesting, Ryan. But like, Epic. I, it was a pleasure. Thank you for coming on the show. I know you're a busy man, so, you know, I, it, it was a pleasure. It was an honor. Anytime, guys. That was fun. We'll do it again soon. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks. Brian. I appreciate you.